Welcome back to the Sportsmax Zone. Waterhouse delivered a big performance on Sunday in match week nine of the Jamaica Premier League. We have a recap and preview of Monday's JPL games. What a beautiful sight here at the Tony Spaulding Sports Complex. We are live here at Arnett Gardens in Kingston, Jamaica. Jamaica Premier League action and it promises to be a lovely afternoon of football. A double header here, Cavalier against Humble Lion in our first game. Humble Lion currently lying in sixth position, Cavalier in second. And following that, the home team Arnett Gardens, they come up against Premier League leaders Mount Pleasant. Let's have a look at the results for this match week nine. But before that, the highlights of yesterday's second encounter between Waterhouse and Harbourview. Anglin, first shot on, well, first shot in anger, that free kick. Just high, Thomas walking around the Shane Staple, and Devroy Bay couldn't connect with the flying header. Waterhouse bearing their fangs very early. And then this boom to Howell. Kenroy Howell. Bang! Ramon Howell, the brother and captain, finding the net here from Boots Pass. And that's how Waterhouse went in front. Not closed down, only uh, found himself in a pocket of space and decided to try his luck. The flicked header from Colorado Murray at the near post. Nicholas Hamilton missed the ball. Bad miss. And then Booth to Devroy Gray. And now Kenroy Howell bursting into the box and just knocks it beyond the advance of goalkeeper Anthony Bennett. Slick football from Waterhouse. This looked good. Real time. Looks even better in slow motion. 2 0. How of you did take their chances? This was one of them. Wouldn't have counted because Nicholas Hamilton has whistled for the foul on Malik Cockings. Foster wasn't to know that, so he was scrambling. And then Timara Lewis sets Nicholas Hamilton free and he'll produce a glorious cross, begging to be turned home. Colorado Murray couldn't. Went for the glancing header, which was the right thing to go for, but somehow got his body position, neck position all wrong. Root one stuff from Harbourview. Staple, the header back to Nicholas Hamilton. Hamilton, the pass to Timar Lewis. And he produces an ugly finish. And then a long ball out of defense. And look at Odell and Harding being closed down by Devroy Gray, who's hungrier. He wants it more, Devroy Gray, and he takes it. That was 3 0. Poor old Odell and Harding. Roughed up by Devroy Gray who nipped in front of him and beat goalkeeper Bennett. Then this, look at Howell. A delicious ball slid through to Shaquille Bradford. Odell and Harding can't get back. And Bradford says, you know what? I'm gonna go high with the finish. Beating Anthony Bennett. And Shaquille Bradford was outstanding tonight. And he got the goal he deserved. And then once more, this should have been five. Zane Hilton to Kenroy Howell, trying to be too cute with the finish. And that's why he missed. Bradford to Denardo Thomas. will set this one back. Defroy Gray went for the shot. It was more a cross shot and locks the read. Diving in at the back post, couldn't make a connection. And Gray can't believe that that one was missed. Glorious pass by Talbot. Nicholas Hamilton, he needed better from a player who can produce better, but not tonight. Then this, O'Shane Staple, fighting off Zane Hilton. Lovely touch, but just couldn't bend it back towards the goal. And he looks to the heavens and wonder, why me, Lord? Perhaps he said, Jaja. Ja wasn't helping in that moment. So a four-star performance by Waterhouse. Defeating Harbourview by four goals to nil, the Howell Baller brothers in form. This is how the match week results look so far. Veer United and Chapleton Maroons played to a goalless draw. So too the Tivoli Gardens and Portmore, as we saw Waterhouse thumping Harbourview by four goals to nil. Dumble holding with a 2 0 victory over Montego Bay United and a 2 all draw between Falkland and Mullines United. Match week nine heating up. The table looks like this, Mount Pleasant still on top with 20 points. No matter what happens this evening, they'll remain on top. Cavalier in the second position. Harbourview, Portmore United. 
Arnett Gardens and Humble Lion complete the top six. And Waterhouse with their big victory just outside of the playoff spots. Fair United and Falkland battling in a relegation zone, not yet with a win in Jamaica Premier League 2023. What an exciting evening promises to be in the Jamaica Premier League. A double match week and this is how it will finish. Arnett Gardens against Mount Pleasant. But before that, Cavalier battle Humble Lions. Stay tuned. Yeah, George, we have seen Mount Pleasant play solidly many a season, but failing to go all the way on the new coach Theodore Whitmore. They are going well as they usually do in the, in the regular season. A big one tonight against Arnett. And um, I'm just wondering if Mount Pleasant can get the job done this year. Well, I'll, I'll say this, that they have been doing so well. They've, they're, they're, they've done things this season so far that they didn't do previously. You know my complaint about Mount Pleasant all the time was that for the talent that they have in the roster, they never take teams apart. They'll win 1-0, 2-1, maybe 2-0. They'll keep a clean sheet and they'll win. But they never dismantle teams. So far this season, they've cut loose a couple of times and have given some teams a real shellacking. So... I'm really salivating at the prospect of what's in store at Tony Spaulding Sports Complex, away to Arnett Gardens. We could have 4-3, we could have 5-1, Mount Pleasant could win big, the junglists could go on a scoring spree. Mm -hmm. I think that's the game of the round. Perhaps it, it, it perhaps is the game of the season so far, especially because Mount Pleasant come to the Tony Spaulding Sports Complex unbeaten and the junglists will be extra motivated yeah. to be the first team to yeah. deny them three points. Yeah, I think they're on a five-game winning streak as well. Toward the bottom half of the table though, George, um, there and Chapleton winless from their nine games so far. Tivoli, seven games now without a win, having started the season okay. And uh, some problems there for Jeremy and Teddy Johnson and his boys. Yeah, it's up front that the problem um, is. And, and, and yesterday I was on commentary, we noted two things. Two of their more, uh, their, their, their better creative players, Justin Dunn and Trevon McCain, didn't really get into the game. Don was a, was a spectator for much of the game. He was substituted late. I thought he was substituted maybe a half an hour too late because he just wasn't there at the races. And Trevon McCain, he spent time on the fringe of the game and not really influencing things. Tivoli are at their best when he can create because he is so influential. And then up front, I mean, when you look at the Tivoli squad, uh, Anthony Nelson is going to give defenders problems, but he's not prolific. Uh, they have Diego McKenzie on the road. He was on the bench yesterday. Uh, Janine Ray won't score many goals. So the Tivoli team is just per it's a personal issue. How they're set up, how they're organized. They're very well organized, very well set up. Uh, slightly different thing between the two um, descriptors there. So they're going to have their challenges over the course of the season because of the absence of that goal score. I mean, goal scoring is the most difficult thing to do in the game. Tivoli don't have anybody who is mastering that. You talk about Mount Pleasant. Mm -hmm. I remember last season when Trevante Stewart came to the, 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 the party in the from Premier Malines, League from yeah. Malines. Mm -hmm. and there were some performances where people were saying yeah he's just big and strong Lance the man has transformed even from then you, you've heard me rave about him from last year yes. I saw things in him that yes. no other striker in the Premier League has nobody has the power mm -hmm. and aligned with the pace yes. and, 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 and the, the brute force he by himself can manhandle any defence line any defence unit uh, if you're going to mark him with one person and say, okay, be physical on him, it won't work because he's going to outmuscle your strongest defender. So I'm very happy with how he has improved over the last, say, nine, um, six to nine months. And he's a real asset. But Tivoli, their problems up front, they can't get goal scoring done. And sometimes they play in a way that negates the best qualities of their chief creators, Dunn and McKean, and then to a lesser extent, Nakeel, right? Yeah, haven't scored a win, Tivoli, since the end of October when they defeated Charlton by three goals to nil. And uh, on the Mount Pleasant issue, uh, there were some fleeting periods last season where there were high scoring. I remember them having a big win over Humberland by five goals to one. Mm. And they also had a 4-0 victory that would have been over 4-1 over Malines. So early season last year, Mount Pleasant did deliver some high scoring performances, but they didn't, they didn't mm. keep it up. And uh, they weren't strong in the playoffs. Um, at all. Well, well, right. So, so statistically, you found those two games. But even so, I, I, I called the game against Humberland. That wasn't a 5-1 five, 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 five game. I think they scored all their goals in the first half and as well. And that's the point I'm making. Yes. I, I was, it was at the UWIJ for Captain yes, Horace yes, yes. Centre. That wasn't. So the, the thing I, I, I've never seen, in the way that 
Waterhouse cut Harbour View to ribbons last night. I know one that you watched the game. I can tell those who didn't watch it. That game properly should have ended 4-3 because yes. Harbour View missed some big chances. So it wasn't as if they didn't get their chances or they didn't yeah. create. They did, but they just didn't score. So I'm saying in the way that Waterhouse cut Harbour View to ribbons yes. last night, yes. I've not seen Mount Pleasant until this season really cut up a team. And that's what I want them to do, given the capacity that is in their squad. And, and, and that's what Theodore Whitmore, I'm sure, is telling the boys, look, we have the talent to do this. Let's go and do this week in, week out. Yeah. And I, I know that uh, Peter Gould, the manager or the, the owner of, of Mount Pleasant, would have been disappointed having made so many coaching changes with uh, the Mount Pleasant team and not getting the result that he, he, he wanted. And um, their roster is always strong. Mount Pleasant's roster was always solid um, from back to front. And um, I think they have set themselves up again for another good run at the championship. Mm -hmm. And um, Whitmore has never won a Premier League um, title as a coach. Mm -hmm. um, we know he's a solid coach. And um, I just think that Mount Pleasant probably have their best chance yet to be champions of the Premier League. Well, there have been some men with big reputations as coaches who've tried and failed. Uh, I hope certainly that Whitmore can succeed where all others have failed before him to take this Mount Pleasant project to the top. Yeah, so Mount Pleasant leaders and they're up against Starnet Gardens tonight. It's on Sports Max 2. You'll see that um, 8.30 Eastern Caribbean time, 7.30 in Jamaica. And it will be live with Donald Oliver on commentary. We go to break. Back with more on the Sports Max Zone after this. Thank you for watching Sportsmax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.